Good afternoon and welcome back. We are on day four of celebrating National School Lunch Week and we are getting wild about school lunches at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. My name is Jessica Shelley. I'm the Director for Student Dining Services at Cincinnati Public Schools and joining me today is Assistant Superintendent Susan Bunty and we are here to see one of the most famous animal ambassadors <laughs> of the zoo and that is Rico, the prehensile tailed <laughs> porcupine and for those of you who have seen Rico online before you know that he enjoys his snacks he has lots of healthy snacks he enjoys from peanut butter to beets to banana chips to corn on the cob lettuce peanuts he likes all kinds of snacks just like we like to provide all kinds of different food and variety in our school lunches so come join us while we meet Rico <laughs> wow, he's, he moves so slow. Are, are all porcupines super slow like this? He's actually not normally this slow. Um, once he gets moving, he's really, really fast. Oh, wow. Um, so he can move pretty quickly whenever he really wants to. What treat is he enjoying right now? So let's see. Right now, he's getting some banana chips. That's one of his favorites. He loves all kind of uh, dried fruits. Um, but right now it's a banana chip, so... Well, bananas are so healthy for not only us, but also for Rico. They give us so much potassium and vitamins. That is correct. And did you know that brown bananas, bananas with brown spots, are actually sweeter than yellow bananas? So I bet banana chips are super sweet and yummy. They are. He definitely loves them. Look at all these quills he has. Do, do porcupines ever shoot out their quills? They don't. So a lot of people think that porcupines can shoot their quills, but they actually cannot shoot them. But what they'll do is if they ever feel scared, they can fluff themselves up really big and they'll back up into whatever is making them scared. And then just like our hairs fall out every single day, whenever he uh, is able to put one of those quills into a predator, it will come out of him and uh, stay with the predator. It looks like he's really using his sense of smell. Is he or? Yes, he is. Yes. So we always say, if you ever look at an animal, look and see what their biggest feature is. And if you look at Rico here, you will see his nose <laughs> is his biggest feature, which means that's the biggest sense that he uses. So elephants, they have those big ears. They're gonna have the best sense of hearing, but Rico here has the best sense of smelling. So speaking of smell, <laughs> I know Rico is cute but he is kind of stinky. <laughs> he is very, very, very stinky. stinky. He kind of smells like um, bad celery almost, we kind of say. So we're seeing that we had some healthy fruit with banana chips and now he's maybe trying some corn as a vegetable. Is that one of his favorite vegetables or does he eat other vegetables too? He loves corn, he loves sweet potato mm. and he loves carrots. Uh, corn is usually one of his favorite ones because it is still sweet, kind of like those fruits. Another one that he really likes is beets. And he'll even eat celery too, so. I love that he eats beets. I, we always encourage our kids to try a new fruit and vegetable, and beets would be one of those great ones to try because it has so many nutrients in it. Look at his tail. He has the longest tail wrapping around a tree. Is that used to help him climb? It is. So this is a Brazilian prehensile tail porcupine. So he uses that tail to help himself balance and climb and support his body weight because he does live up in the tree. So he's showing you what a great climber he is right now. Oh my goodness. So where do porcupines live? You said this one lives in Brazil. Do all porcupines live in Brazil? No. So he is, you'll find him all over South America. So Brazil um, and Costa Rica, places like that in the rainforest. But we actually have porcupines that live right here in North America, out in the West, and they live on the ground. You also have them all over Africa, India, Asia. There's all different types of porcupines, but he is one of the only tree-dwelling porcupines. So how many times a day does he eat? We mainly just feed him once. Um, today he's probably going to get fed right now, and then we'll feed him again later on, but they are nocturnal, so that means they're awake at night. So all of our nocturnal animals, we feed them at the end of the day so that he has food to forage all night long. So he is loving that peanut butter. I want to pause for a moment so we can actually hear him enjoy that peanut butter because he is making some delicious sounds.
So he is getting all of that peanut butter out because peanut butter is so good in protein and high in fiber. Susan, what's your favorite thing to enjoy with peanut butter? Because he seems to be loving peanut butter on celery. I think peanut butter and celery is really good, but I also like peanut butter with apples. I agree. Protein with a fruit or vegetable, that is a superfood right there and a great healthy snack. He's enjoying it so much, it's all over his whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Ooh, a new food. There's oh, his corn. <laughs> there he so it's really cute whenever he eats it. He eats it kind of like we do. He'll hold on to it and he'll eat all the kernels off um, and leave the cob behind. He seems really comfortable around people. He is. He is one of our rock star animals. Um, he's very well known, um, not only here at the zoo, but kind of all over the world right now. He's one of our popular guys. We do all kind of fun stuff with him. So people love watching the videos of him, especially whenever he's eating. Mm -hmm. So you said he's nocturnal. And so are most porcupines nocturnal? Would we ever see a porcupine here in Ohio? Not really. You, they're, Potentially could be a North American one, but they usually live more out west, uh, so you really wouldn't see them out here very much. Okay. So he has such a long tail, it kind of reminds me of a bear cat tail. Are they in the same animal category as bear cats? They are not. That is a great question. So Rico here is actually part of the rodent family. So he's going to be related to like your mice and your rats and beavers. So when they're in their natural habitats, are there any things that we can do to help make sure that we keep them safe? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the big things is like the simple here at home is make sure you're recycling as much as you can. And also make sure you're recycling your cell phones uh, because trees will get cut down to kind of help make um, cell phones, but also like uh, trees are being cut down for power lines. So we're trying to find a way to help keep that deforestation down because as these guys are losing their trees, they're climbing up on power lines and then they're getting injured up there instead. So we've got to find a way to make sure their habitat stays nice and safe for them. What great advice to make sure we're all recycling, not only at home, but at school. So I, I don't know if everybody can see it on video, but he has little wisps of, is that fur? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, he has yeah. also. So I thought porcupines only had quills, but it looks like he also has little as well. So quills, believe it or not, are just made out of hair. They're the exact wow. same thing. They're just thickened. They're almost like your fingernails. And so what you're seeing, it's more, they are quills as well, but they're just really hair-like. They're very, very thin. You can also look at his <laughs> belly, and his belly is very thin with those. Do you, do you want, do you want the beat? beat? Do you want the beat? Ooh, he likes it. Okay, yeah, take your beat. So you'll see that his, his quills on his belly are pretty soft as well. They're pretty short. And then these are more like more whiskers. Since they're nocturnal, they're moving around at night. Uh, so they do have these long hair-like ones, but they're really sensitive so they can tell if he's running into anything. But you can probably imagine those quills are pretty sharp. Yes. And so you wouldn't really want to stab yourself if you're bending over like this. That's why those ones on his belly are pretty soft and pretty short, so he doesn't hurt himself. And his paws are actually like little hands. They are. Mm -hmm. Do you want something else over there? So how old is Rico? Will he, he get is any five. bigger than this or is he full grown? He's full grown. He is five years old. He will not get any bigger than this. And how long do porcupines typically live? What's their lifespan? We will be able to hopefully keep him around into his mid to late teens. Out in the wild, they would probably live to be about 10 to 12 years old. Um, but since he's here at the zoo and he's getting free food and getting very well taken care of, he'll live closer to hopefully be around 16, 18 years old. I just want to make sure we stop and pause because this is probably one of the cutest things it I've ever adorable. seen. It is adorable. Gosh, I hope our kids at lunch enjoy their corn as yes. much as Rico is enjoying his. 
And I have to tell you, I have enjoyed this time with Rico and you so much today. Yes. And I gotta tell you, thank you, Keeper Tammy, yes. for spending so much time and answering so many questions about Rico, who is one of the ma uh, famous ambassadors here at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. So thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you, Miss Bunty, for coming and enjoying this time with us as well. And be sure to tune in tomorrow, because tomorrow is Fun Friday. And we're going to be visiting with a very special animal here at Cincinnati Zoo, whose name also begins with the letter F. Do you know who I'm talking about? We'll see you tomorrow on Facebook Live when we're streaming at 945 with our fun Friday friend <laughs> of our special guest, Interim Superintendent Tiani Amat. See you then. Oh my God. Oh yeah, thank you.